Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, Master Propaganda Hero Psych Defender of the Fatherland. With our fiercely exciting one versus one on a crossroads between the South Guard here, Brussels, fighting for the Soviet Union. The First Guards Motorized Rifle Division here with Tank Hunter Tactics, Shot Rifle, and Defensive Tactics. Not the most usual sort of set of their doctrines versus the North Guard, Nagano, fighting for the Wehrmacht, Germany, Deutschland. Taking on the role here of the 10th Panzer Division with Elite Troops Lightning War and Mechanized Assault there with Infantry and Snarl Bullets and certainly a more usual setup there with sort of doctrines. But again, Shot Rifle not seen so much and certainly Tank has Tactics is something Bros has sort of been uh, using a lot le lately. Investing much into sort of uh, getting pretty good with it actually. Double use that here for Bros into Conscripts. No special rifle command start here, so he will likely go for a lot more infantry, which could of course then synergize with tank hunter tactics, allowing him a lot of anti-tank ability if he needs it. Could of course also go for shot rifle to support them with other infantry, of course just go for defensive tactics. Double conscripts there, so then you sort of rush out there. The doubling near side just allows him to get out faster on the field than just going for conscripts right away. And that is clearly here what Brawlsars wants too. Not going to go for a much more conventional MD42 grenadier start here. Nothing too surprising, nothing that sort of makes you go... Wow, but uh, it works, it works, and certainly that is nothing to scoff at. But looks like he's planning a sniper next year after the Gundy. Oh, no, there you go, more Gundies. Just was a bit of a delay there. Going down the Gundies, but still, he's splitting up his forces very thin. He's also leaving the center a bit exposed. Not entirely sure if I'm a big fan of this. There you go, Gundies, Brigade, Shabbat, and Gundies, Khan, Anti Case versus most Nagants. Can't coming up to 40, they're going to be fully forced to retreat. They're just simply being overwhelmed. There you go. One going to do down to the engineers. Second engineers, what they're arriving. Push them back. In the west, we got points with short by MD42s and pioneers. So, second is going down. And the center is now very vulnerable, very open. So far, though, oh, there he goes. About to use some pushing, but there he goes. Moving. And he's not committing all of his conscripts, though. He might be, of course, his opponents now react to anything there. So, he's just dispatching a single squad there. He's also laying down mines here. Good spot there. Also, very quick. Swift movement there. Kanska is falling back. MD4 Dugan is now being drawn towards the center here. Could try and draw in. Not going to have for a prolonged engagement. That's not going to favor him because the house is used being much stronger position to fight from. If that happens, I mean, Brosas could just use the Kanska's quarter two and type a larger amount of manpower there from Nogano and then sort of hit him elsewhere. In fact, we can see a Kanska being moved westwards there. More going to this around there for Nogano and the 10th Panzer Division. Kanska hanging about there. Shots fired. Bit of a shooting going on there, constantly up, going in from the east and south. There goes straight to the MG42, set to support here, quickly falling back, using the house that way, board being suppressed. Good move there, no upgrades here, so the Grenadiers, Pioneers should have the chance, that's the conscripts here. And third Grenadiers there for Nogano, 10th Panzer Division, adding a lot of infantry there from its Panzer Grenadier Battalion. And they're going to just move up here against counting Grenadiers, conscripts there again under 540 in the house. In the south, the engineer squad's just securing everything else as so far. It's sort of hit a bit of a stalemate, a bit of a deadlock. Nogano has not got a lot of territory, but at the same time, it does have a lot of firepower that prevents uh, Brosov from just pushing through here easily in that sense. So he's sort of got a reasonably safe sort of um, corner here. But again, it's much difficult just for Brosov to break through, and he can't sort of go through here. That Basically, you see, but again, he's not quite able to move because at the same time, he's preventing not enough from pushing through here. At the same time, not preventing him from pushing through there as well. But there you go. He's falling back thanks to the flame force around on the left flank here. So, not going to swing about here and unseating the front line there for Brosas. Very good work. Very good work there by Nakano. Very solid tactical move. No tech up. Resources floating. Is he planning a sniper? Is he planning stormtroopers assault gun? It is. Tech up. So it needs to be fast. He could also go for a mortar, a bit of smoke they could have up. Playing for Ingeese, he's playing a game this whole time to see who gets in there first and then burns the other one to death. But in this case, Ingeese are into a bit too much trouble and are almost wiped out there. Brosa has got a bit lucky in Fortune Mowing. And there you go. Through some deft tactical movements, Nakano has gained control of the center of the map and is now pushing in towards the east there against Brosa, who's now a bit on the defensive here and also floating resources. And there you go. Nakano is going for the sniper. De Scharf shoots it. Reinforcing. 
And there you go. He's basically, in this case, trying to draw away uh, Nagano from the front line, just baiting them towards his own territory by threatening the field point. That way, just trying to defend what's little left just there. Maybe also leaving room for another opening. So, a very sharp tactical move there. A very sharp tactical move. Again, doesn't look immediately obvious. Of course, it has the risk of losing the unit on retreat there if he pushes it too far. But still, you can sort of make an opening there. Sort of confuse Nakano. And meanwhile, then sort of more aggressively pushing it. So, good move there. But at the same time, he's now leaving his own car points to the east open. So, we'll have to see if this works out, though, for um, Bros. has gone there for support and company. A mod wouldn't be a half bad idea. Maxim could also be anything. There he goes. Going for the Maxim. A lot of players have uh, sworn off the Maxim now that it's not a disc here, but uh, Brosas is clearly one of those who understands that the Maxim is still pretty useful if you know how to use it. Counter push against the Grenadiers. Need to flank though. Uh, and apparently he didn't. So now they're engaged by the conscripts. Going ahead, he can set up an MD42. He might be able to stall them, but the MD42 is actually up at the front line, threatening his cutoff point. So it does leave his own cutoff point further exposed, plus, of course, his fuel point. So, in that regard, we've got two engagements here, both sort of important to the other player. But again, they're themselves occupied with trying to harass the other bastard. Reinforcement, they're healing there. Oh, actually, not healing yet. He has not upgraded. He has teched up. He has to build. And down south, we've got the maximum out there for Brosas. And he needs pushing forward, so they're pushing back in the Grenadiers. MD42 covering up there. Maximum out in the open, grabbing the fuel point there. And Conscript retreating. There we go. Nice flank with the flame flame. He is dislodged. The MD42 reclaims the cutoff point. Almost got the fuel point there, which is where a Nogino did not strike. Meaning, while he was altering the cutoff point, he was also grabbing the fuel point that way. Actually, delivering a bit more of a double blow there to Nogino. So, good work there by Brosas. Also, take up for Nogino in the 10th punch he's shown. It's the first guard's motorized rifle division advances. Also, laying down a lot of mines there. Laying down a lot of mines. That way, make it harder for Nagano to repeat what he just did. They shot a move there. Maxim occupying the house. The enemy is encroaching on our territory. Sitting up there on the lower floor, I imagine. Or where is it set up? Ah, down there. I'm not gonna carry that thing all the way up. It's water cooled. They are heavy. And none of you are gonna help me, anyways. More mines. Good work there by Brosas. Very good work there. Again, he's laid down a lot of mines here. That's gonna make it much harder for Nogano to advance. So, so far, he's yet to hit uh, even that one. So, the fact he has gone for no mines was gonna mean he's gonna have to go for some at some point, meaning that's a lot more man pun. Mines was just to sort of preserve the rest of his forces. Max Medin gonna this. We got Lightning Wolf from Nogano. No elite troops. Of course, either way, he gets G43s. Comes without the open, taking fire from the Grenadiers and the Sniper, bleeding up bit by bit. Mortal away for Brosa, supports front line troops there as Nogano, good work. And these Grenadiers versus Engineers conscripts end up here healing and reinforcing going for the Pioneers. Lightly, it could be an idea, all Panzer Grenadiers for Nogano, but he does go for the 2 to 2. Like the Panzer Spearwagen, a favourite amongst many a Wehrmacht player. Grenadiers are advancing up the west side, snuffling over support here in the centre against the Maximum in the east. Grenadiers are slowly being at the country, already in a weak position. So there you go, healing reinforcement up. Grenadiers getting G43s on top of everything else. The G43 was a German semi automatic rifle based off the Soviet SVT 40 semi automatic rifle because the first attempt, the Gewehr 41, turned out to be actually not very good. They couldn't figure out the sort of mechanism. So they uh, used some. Uh, Captured SVT 40s sort of base the Gewehr 43 off from. So, a little fun fact there. Little fun fact. In that regard, the Russians and the Germans learned a lot from each other actually and copied the signs. Generally, not something that's discussed very often though. Conscript MP42 there. Sniper gun and he is quick right in front of the MD42, but there you go, realize it's actually going straight to the machine gun, gets back here. 2-2, two two, trying to deal with the maximum, it's not actually doing too well there, taking too much damage, plus of course the mortar here, threatening the 2-2 two two with some nasty damage as well, Gunners pushing forward over the G43s, getting off some extra hits there. MD42 behind covering fire there, making it harder for the counter to obtain a precision, rifle grenade off as well, full retreat there from Prozras in the east, Pioneers advancing, hitting off one mine, but uh, not a lot of, oh, there's actually more there from uh, Prozras, again he's been very thorough with his mining, Process though has yet to go for a doctrine. No sign of anything yet there. No sign of anything yet there. Also, his malt is currently very exposed in the centre. I mean, anything there could theoretically wipe it out and steal it. But there you go. Tech up for Brosas. T-7 light tank on the way. They're very classic choice. Also, solid one. Cannot deal with the 2-2. The infantry. 
good flank with the T70 could prove to be absolutely devastating for Nagano. More mines, and of course we note here, but also as it's going for mines, because though Nagano has yet to lay down a single mine himself, compared to again, you know, he is not taking any chances with his opponent, whereas Nagano has yet to get any mines with himself, and probably doesn't want to right away. Oh, caught laying down mines! Always be careful about that. I mean, you could risk the mine going off, and the fact that mine was very close to being set off there by the 2 2 2. That could have been a full wipe there. For, no, not full wipe, actually. So it's going to two losses there. But there you go, because engage it with the T 10 light tank. Maximum flying rate, they're going to lead us there. Rifle nades, maximum fire. T 10 flying, it's 45 minute gun. They're just taking a nasty losses from the T 10 light tank as it just tears into them. In the west, they're counting gate grenadiers, but again, out in the open versus G43 equipped grenadiers, the conscripts at Veteran 1 don't stand much of what is actually known as a chance. I mean, it need upgrades to have a decent chance there versus Nogano's grenadiers. In the center here, T-Sim pushing up there, Pioneers pushing back the engineers, but the T-Sim is almost there. Got the 2 2 2, and the pack 40 can't quite hit there. He also doesn't know, so there's your drive right in front of it. And this game, oh, do you get your Panzer Pass right in front of the pack 40? Oh, close their house to save the T-70 light tank. And they seem to be there careful. Still got the mortar there firing away. And in the west, the conscripts push back the gun. It looks like that was the second conscript what they're rhyming to um, facilitate the final breakthrough. Then we have an MP4 troop they're in the cemetery ready to inter a few Russians. Gun it is there. Almost being rubbed up here by the T-70 light tank. But there you go. Pack 40 gets off a good hit. Gun it is wiped though. That's a big loss for Nagano. Big loss. No take up yet for him. Pack 40, in fact, very exposed. Nagano in a bit of a tricky situation. He's just going for a placement. Gun it is. No attempt here by Nagano for Panzer Gun it is. And a, a brief look like he was actually sitting at a fuel case on the cough point. But he isn't. So both of pressing onwards, Maxim back in action as well here, close to Veteran T2. More G for the fees, no LMGs, and there he goes, suppressed. And the West Grand points, and also laying down a smoke screen on the NG42, very good work there by Brussels, very good work. Then pushing out against the country, country, need to retreat, need to retreat, ah, uh, shit. Kills him Ludwig, I want him dead. And comes to the suppressed by the MU42. One was called out of position. And comes to the flanking behind the Maxim. T7 building up. Engineers flanking against the Gunnadies as well there. Uh, looking bad for the Gunnadies to retreat. These have not suffered too many losses. And over here, Sniper John against the Conscript, but they're still intent on grabbing that fuel pump, thusly denying Nogano a lot of precious fuel. And he is also finally taken up there. Finally, Brosas could also be not by now. Consider taking up. They're going for T34s from 6s so that way. Pressure Nogano. But I so far yet to show an inclination towards that. Oh snap! Mortar wiped here. A oh, mortar wiped the MG42. Bit of a loss there for Nogger and particularly the rush ups and forces to deal with it. But so far though, he does not have any units in the vicinity able to do that. And now he might lose the pack 40s. Well, there you go. And he could steal that one away from. Nogano, those are several critical losses here against Brosas and the First Guards Motorized Rifle Division. Critical losses. I mean, MG42 there, Pack 40 stolen away. If he steals the MG42 as well, then Nogano could be in some deep sauerkraut. In the meanwhile, there's a Pomaco going up for Nogano. Schnell, I want you working harder. Throw more sandbags at it until the rest appears. How does it work anyway? You know the Germans. Nazi magic, mein Freund. Anyways. Those are being pushed back by the T-70. They're spotting ahead for the Maxim. Nice work there. Some aggressive and tactical use of the T-70. But Brosas has yet to go for Doctrine. I wonder what's the cause of that. It seems like Brosas is perhaps unsure what he wants to do here. Versus Nogano. He's just not sure of himself. And that might be causing a bit of a tactical delay. Or strategic delay more sensibly. I suppose. Or what say again. I mean he could go for Shock Raft. Go for an IS-2. Prepare for it. Shock Troopers. They're pretty good. He could go for Tank Hunter Tactics. Lay down a lot of mines. To slow down enemy armor if it comes. Or he could go for Defensive. At this point, he's got the supporting company out, and he's got stuff from it, so it feels less efficient as well. So, I'm guessing tank hunter tactics, shock rifles, are more likely choice of a brawl slash, But so far, 
Nothing is happening. But the way he's floating fuel and resources and not taking up certainly has me believing he's more likely to go for shock rifle and the IS-2. In which case a shock to the score could also have an impact there versus a Nogano. If utilized correctly. Did not get the MG-42 though. What a shame there by uh, Blossa. So I'm sure Nogano is quite relieved. Quite relieved. That was probably sort of a sigh of relief from it. In fact, when you saw that, oh my god, they did make off, is it? Phew, we would have gotten into the trouble with the fear of his hat. Ah, yeah. I remember that time we lost the Tiger tank. Yeah, we had to hear for it for ages. Yeah. Ugh. Nogano here. Saving up for Panzer IV. Imagine, there we go. Panzer can't find away. That could certainly punish Brussels a bit for trying to play for the eyes, too. And there you go, Panzer Kampfang there slowly approaching the front lines for the tense Panzer Division. T-78 was engaged the Grenadiers. And that match was up, they also pressing them in a matter of uh, seconds. First got there, getting up a bit close, and there he goes, suppressed. T-78 continues far away. Panzer IV, halfway done. Rosas. Oh, he is now taking up, so. I mean, he could still be going for shock rifle, but it might not quite be the priority for Rosas at the moment. Well, the other hand, he still isn't chosen, it's just the doctrine, though. Also noting he's now laid down a demo chart to cover the point and Nogano has still yet to get any mark. In fact, he's in some cases doubling up on mines. So it definitely feels like a not very good choice here by Nogano not choosing any mines for your pioneers up. But there you go, Sandbags down here. Good work by Brostas, actually. Again, there's not really a lot of good cover, so just some good Sandbags in the right place could do a lot there to slow down your opponent. But there you go, Pantafort. Smokescreen around here as well. Sneaky. Very sneaky. So there you go, Panzer Kampfwagen on the way. No paint map machine in there though for Nogano's Panzers. We are the enemy. There you go, T-34 on the way for Brosras. Need to get the Pack 40 up there to deal with the fascist Panzer. Sandbags already blown to bits and comes to almost be annihilated in the process. They just can't withstand the sheer firepower of the Panzer 4, supported here by Grenadier Squad. Almost getting the entire unit wiped here, though. But it's practically gone, anyways, with only poor Vasily living. And there you go, Pack 40 lands a good hit there. T 54 6 almost done for Brosas, who's still not choosing a doctor. Gunners bringing it, catching the engineers off guard. M42, they're pushing back conscripts. Brosas could consider more infantry. He's also going for an HD5 to help counter the Panzer IV. I like T-34 some ticks out there for Brosas, the fast tank of many. H5 almost down there for Br -br Brosas. And Flare Trip Man goes on. So Brosas actually laying down again a lot of mining, just the cheaper ones. And he's still floating the munitions, you know, that's the interesting. He's still floating munitions though. Again, doctrinally, nothing is happening. Air is engaged with the T-34 some six machine guns flaring away. H5 they're halfway done. Just pushing against here the pack 40, more to firing into port here. Although, he should be careful about placing it too close to his own mines. And if his opponent were to go for a counter mortar, he could end up in a lot of trouble. So he says the thing that with the mines, if this set off by an explosion, it causes the explosion to sort of like just exponentially get much worse. That's actually a dangerous thing there. And there you go, finally got some mines for us. They didn't do most of the unit help. Hey, look, it's boom. You can see that there's a lot of mines, and again, that is some very thorough mining there by Brostar. So it's a good thing you got minesweepers. It's a good thing. But the rough grenade here. Ah, he's right next to it. Oh, didn't set it off. Well, if he had set it off, that would probably game over the machine gun crew. Can be a bit hit and miss if the rough grenade sets it off nowadays, but if it had, again, boom. Pat would be constantly push up part in the west there. T70 here in the east, and H5 going straight for the Panther through the center. Aggressive pursuit there by Brostras. And there you go, the Nogano caught in the low here to counter the issue 5 tank. So we need to get, desperately get out of there. Third from the cannon and falling opening. And the T 54 to 6, taking it down to half health. Another round there, and the T 54 almost down here. Need to pull out of there. But the crew is done, the engine is damaged, and the Germans are hot on its heels. Shot bounce, shot bounce, but can it get out of there in the time? Or will the cannon and falling tang it apart? The issue 5 tank pulled too far behind there. There you go, though. 
T-34 went down there due to the Panzer IV supported here by the Luftwaffe. It's certainly a bit of a problem there for Brosras. And how would he counter that? Would he prepare for it, though? I mean, you couldn't see him go for the attack up top. In fact, he's going for a half take here. He might, in fact, just be thinking, all right, I don't want to experience this ever again. I will thusly go for the anti-aircraft half tech to help shoot those bastards down. It's certainly rare to see a player actually trying to counter the enemy air support. Most players just don't bother. There you go, Gunny's hitting mines. Almost hit another mine, though. Almost hit another mine. Again, really thorough mining there by Broslas. There's still no doctrine. Again, 20 minutes into the game, and there's just no doctrine from Broslas. But there you go, M5 half tech out there for Broslas, quickly adding the quad 50 calibers to it. The Russian sat the earned version, which was an older truck with the um, quart maxims on it. Fun fact. I also think they just used more sort of static anti aircraft guns. They also had their own version of the Flak 88, which is just an 85mm anti aircraft gun, which was actually used the same gun on the H 55 and the T 35 there, as a fun fact. T 7 blasting with the H 55 covering the east. So there you go. Anti-aircraft fire there for dealing with any fascist aircraft. Ross is keeping up the pressure there. This is not going to. Not going to certainly still uh, suck in here. That's the first guards motorized rifle division there. Pack 40 hammering away. Still no doctrine though. It's a bit disconcerting by Brosser. It's a bit disconcerting. From this advancing there comes force fall back, got the T-Sin blasting away, the 45 the gun just opening up on those fascists. Almost in fear, there you go, half to of course, the meanwhile, you know, serve as an anti-infantry measure there. It's 450 cover machine guns. H-5 hanging back, he's just waiting for the Panther 4 to try and break out, and then hit it there with the H-5 tank destroyer. And there you go, turns to shoot. Good hit there. Good hit. Get to penetrating it from the pentacle. The pentacle down to half health. There you go. Another hit. Pioneers pinned down here with maximum 10 kills already. Rough grenade off. Doesn't have much of an impact there. Mortar auto blasting away. Four kills. Pack 40 ult up here. Nice hit. Then he's going for a Katusha rocket launcher now. Still no doctrine though, but Katusha rocket launcher. I mean, there's a lot of infantry support weapons. The way Nogano's handling his troops could, you know, make a Katusha rocket launcher viable. I mean, Mark Nogano briefly considered a stoop there, but. I think Nagano rather wants the Tiger here. A well handled Tiger tank could certainly be useful versus Brosa. So there's the H5 tank destroyer, which could be a problem. But uh, he's got a Panzer, he's got some infantry which can support his tanks well. So, I mean, a mix of those could be quite devastating. Could also launch a good flank catching uh, Brosa's off guard. Of course, the issue is still going to be all of those mines. I mean, if that Tiger hits a mine, it does, doesn't go anywhere. Nagano is going to be a bit of a sore spot if it happens right in front of the H5. There you go, back to. Harassment here, but there's still the MD42 hidden in the cemetery. You know, Dieter, I heard the ghost of Trotsky haunts this graveyard. He died in Mexico, you idiot. Died by an ice pick. Oh. Gonna need this there being suppressed here by the Max Menego Katrusha rocket launcher firing away there. Helping to disrupt here in Nokino's defensive center, opening up for an attack there. And Close, but not quite. That, on the other hand, did the job completely. Wiping the pack 40. There you go. He moves ahead. The issue five sniping out the pack 40. There, pack 40 moving up as well. There, Panzer force shoots. Pioneers trying to recruit. There you go. This you see just in the nick of time. They could still get wiped. He's something with the grenades affecting the flank. Good overall tactical move there by Grossfass. Very ex well executed assault there. Pack 40 to set up there. Panzer four blitzing forwards. Could be a problem. There you finally set up. Pack 40. Oh, I can't turn fast enough either. Oh, they could lose here, the HD5 to the Panzer IV. Good counterattack by Nagano. Good counterattack, and there you go. He gets the Pack 40, just hasn't been able to get off a single shot there. Constant all running, stealing the Pack 40, though. They could get wiped out here. It's close to the Tiger tank, though. Panzer IV escapes. Pack 40 wiped there, so. Gross, oh, actually suffered a bit heavily there. I mean, it was close, but uh, the Pack 40 handling was a bit awkward. In this case, the house was actually a huge obstacle for him, and of course, he can't shoot through it. He might have better if he tried to use the pack 4 to wreck the other pack 4 and then had the issue 5 coming against the Panzer 4, but uh, too late for that. And he's lost more infantry now. But Orsas is taking huge losses. He needs to replace his infantry losses, but he's down to just one conscript squad 
and his opponent Ike to be able to you know keep his infantry alive much better. So this is actually a bit bad for Brosos, who's still yet to go for the doctrine. Still yet to go for the doctrine. I mean, if you really at this stage and have chosen a doctrine, usually you might want to consider another one. Of course, it could be Brosos experimenting and realizing it's just not quite working out for him. Maybe I don't know, but uh, certainly it is concerning that he hasn't chosen a doctrine. Tiger tank out there for Nogano. Tiga. Gun is in the fire there, and more setting up. T-34-6 here, arriving for Broslas. Moving down the center up here, T-56 casting the enemy for two of guard in the cemetery, but quickly pulls back. Perhaps realizing in fact he's pushed too far and has no effect. Really, really, really exposed flank in this case. We see that Nogano has sense upon it, tries to move the panther up behind the T-54, but of course, Brosos realizing in time tries to get away. There we go. Still feeds the panther for enough veterans to push into veteran two, which will make it a much more formidable opponent for Brosos. Arm Nego, Tiger was ahead, it gets a good hit on the hand track. We got the pack four there. Quick time, get off a stun hit there on it. Ulti hit the mine there. Oh! Mine went off. Oh dear. If he had the Asian Fire, that could have been a death sentence for the Tiger. But there's a chance he gets away, particularly there's no target weak point from the Brawl Size of Pack 40 there. So close, but not quite there. A few more kills over the Katusha. Keep the following up the center here. Eventually, three pioneers pushed back with it. T 34, and we got the T moving in as well. 15 kills and quick reconnaissance. He's basically using it a lot there, by the way, to help spot for his. Uh, Anti tank weapons in general for the best of his forces. Very good move there. I mean, most players generally don't use the recon mode a lot. Hell, I don't. I mean, it's quite impressive to see someone actually make active usage of it. Of course, he's still very short on infantry. He's trying to make up for it now with a lot of armor, but feels like it might be a bit late. And he still hasn't gone for a dodge. And I mean, we could still use to go for tank hunter, maybe for some anti tank bombing runs or something like that. That could maybe, you know, catch Noggin off guard a bit here and there. I don't know, incendiary artillery badges from Shock Rifle. It's just. He's got 400 closing in a 5 emissions and he still hasn't chosen a doctrine here. Bit worrying. So that indicates that the Brawlers doesn't care at this stage or he's just not sure what to do. Sunny Red to see a high ranked player go for, go for this long. See if someone like Brawlers. He seems to feel like much better with his uh, doctrinal choices, yet here it's. Uh, Maybe he's having a harder time sort of getting a grip of Nogano, maybe. Hard to say. But he's got a lot of vehicles. He's got two T-Fellows, or T-70, Katusha, and a half track. Panther Bulls that takes it there. Oh, he could lose it, he could lose it, except the Pack 4 is nowhere nearby. And now there's the T-Fellows. He could actually end up losing the T-Fellows to the Panther 4 here. Panther 4. Oh, what? It missed despite technically pass hitting. Ah, oh, I hate when that happens. But there you go, flanks the T-Fellows. The tank tank over the T for shot bounces, hits the side armor, doesn't go through the shirts and uh, the Panzer 4 gets away. Nogano's got the devil's own luck here. That was filthy lucky there. Trying to get hit with the Katusha. <laughs> The Panzer IV that refuses to die. The Pioneers, on the other hand, are dying quite well, though. The Pioneers are dying quite well, but that Panzer IV just won't die. <laughs> Tiger weak point there. Stops Tiger in its tracks, but the problem is that's not going to last for long, and he's been waiting for one of the gunners. And there's Tiger there. Ah, oh, wipe the pack 40. Half track down as well. Still no doctrine from Brawlstar, so at this point, it will matter much. Narkin is just crashing his way here through uh, Brawlstars' front. Tiger for some reason can't hit though. Jürgen, have you been thinking again? Ah, Scheiße. He's going after the sniper there. Oh, 
Time it off there, killing a few grenadiers. I mean, Blossom always mined a lot, they sort of slacked off a bit later into the game. Just a bit. Kachusha hanging back there. T for the problem fixed up. Nagano certainly got the larger force with more tanks. With more armor for sure. Tag team trying to pursue the T soon is now using to grab territory. Good work. Good work. Maximum abandoned. Not a lot left. There's active force to go for a field gun, and he's going for another T-34. Tiger at the counter out in the open here, trying to grab Maxim, but they are quickly under heavy fire there. Kachusha fire in the center. Tiger moving ahead here straight for the field gun fire. Doesn't care about the pen force of boarding. Tiger they almost knocked out here by Bros. That's T-34 from the six. Another T-34 on the way for him. Tiger in a lot of trouble here. I have a chance to just keep the front line in front here. Panzer Paul, they're dealing with the Maxim here. Could turn it about a bit further here, but the strategic point is actually blocking from Tees to just turn the Panzer Paul about to have the whole machine as well. Flying on the field. And there we go, Muscat it up here. Tiger almost done. Main gun out on the T-34. Tees and continue to flank here. The Tiger blitzing about here to present the front there. He does not want to risk anything. Ramming the Tiger, stunning the crew. Slip of health. The T-70 got penetrating it through there. It's getting up behind the rearmor. Missed though. Missed. Shot bounced. Penetrating hit there. Shot bounced. Almost got the Tiger tank there. Shot bounced. Almost got the Tiger there. Ah, and right before he can get the Tiger, the T-Center gets knocked out. And this Brawl Stars is pretty much nothing left. He's all gone. Kaput. It's a mine there. Almost got the Panther Horde. It's now Betsy Free. Panzer Faust, Vetri Free, there we go. Almost got the T-54 with the T-4, but there we go. Gets the Panzer Four. It's like ran out. But with this Brosa surrenders, his forces are crippled beyond fighting. And again, the noticeable thing, he just doesn't choose a doctrine. And certainly if you can't choose a doctrine, I I would usually suggest you change your doctrines up a bit to find something that works better for you. I mean, really weird to watch a high rank play absolutely choose nothing. Even right in the end before he lost there. So, not entirely sure to have him there with I feel it's one of his bigger mistakes there overall. But even then, he made a lot of good moves. The problem was just he struggled there to an extent versus Nogano. who made good use of his doctrine. Also good use of his armor. It's at times then again, Bros is just... Wasn't quite there always at times. I think I took caught up. It's fine descending. Didn't try to outmaneuver Narkin as much there either. And that just sort of bled out. Brosos getting Narkin more time. But again, it was close at several times. It was really close there. But there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. Hope it gave you different matches. If it did, one subscribe, tell a friend, share it with everyone. If not, send in a replay on a fight. Some feedback in the comment section. This is Imperial Dancing. Cheers. Thank you all for watching. Hope to see you all tomorrow for another signing episode. Bye.